Hi, my name is Brad Sorensen, Managing Director of Sunny's Consulting and Business Development Team. I'm here to tell you about five secrets to finding a stellar car wash site. Before we get into those secrets, the first thing we need to do is identify what type of car wash model you're planning on building. Is it a flex, an express, exterior, or even an in-bay automatic self-serve? The secrets that we give you are gonna be relevant to any of those models, although there are gonna be some nuances depending on which model you're looking at. The first secret that we need to determine is where are the people at? We need to identify the market size. We wanna find as many people as possible. So typically we see that we need 25 to 30,000 people to support a car wash. So we're gonna identify the number of competitors in that market to see if there's room for our car wash project. We're gonna look at all the competitors, identify what model they are, and then we wanna see if it's a full serve or an in-bay automatic or a self-serve site. Is there enough room on that car wash to change their model to compete with us? From there, we can find out what is our potential in this market. Is there room for a car wash? Is there room for two or three where I can put a small chain? The next secret is what does a car wash site look like? So how do we identify what the perfect car wash site looks like? The first thing we need to see is what are the businesses around it? So when we're looking for a car wash site, we already mentioned we're looking for people. Where is your largest concentration of people and local traffic gonna be on a weekly basis? Typically, we're looking at the surrounding businesses around our car wash site. The types of businesses that we wanna see are gonna be weekly needs businesses. We wanna see big box stores, we wanna see grocery stores, places that customers are gonna be every week regardless. From there, we're looking at what other businesses are around it. If they're small businesses, that is certainly a draw. If it's hotels, this is probably gonna be catering more toward commuter traffic. This is not a traffic that actually supports car washes. Most people are gonna wash their cars where they're doing their weekly shopping because it's convenient to them. So from there, we're gonna dig into the traffic counts. We like to see 20 to 25,000 cars a day passing a site. We want that to be an AADT count, which is a long-term long two-way traffic count. So if we're looking at traffic counts and we see there's a 30,000 traffic count out in front of the site, but we look at the market and there's only 20,000 vehicles in that market, we can assume that that is heavily made up of commuter traffic, not a traffic count that we can rely on. So when we're looking at speed limits, we want to make sure that we are 45 miles an hour or less. The lower the speed, the better chance that vehicle market has of seeing your site and getting over to your site. The third secret we're looking at is the site specifically. Will a car wash fit and flow on that location? So we're looking at the physical size of the lot. We're not only looking at the size of the lot, but also the shape. We love to see square or rectangle shape properties. If it's an acre and a half, but it's shaped like a piece of pie, you're gonna lose a lot of usable space on that where you can't have turning radius. Anywhere you have a sharp corner, that can be discounted off of that site. So once, once we've identified that the size of the lot is big enough to do what we need to do on it, we need to look at other factors that could discount some of the space that we have. So building setbacks, green space requirements, and water retention can all affect how much usable space we have. The other thing that we need to identify is, is the site below grade, or is it above grade, or are there trees on it? How much site work is gonna be required to get the site car wash ready? This will also affect the viability of the site. The fourth secret that we're looking at is gonna be visibility and access of the site. So we like to see from both directions of the site at least 500 feet. What are we looking for? We're looking for either the building, we wanna see car wash signage, the vacuum post. We just need to be able for our customers to identify that there's a car wash coming up and then the speed limit is slow enough that they can get over to access it. So when it comes to signage, restrictions are something that can certainly hurt the visibility of the site. So you need to find out what type of signage is allowed. How many square feet of signage are you allowed to put on the car wash? How much can you put on the building? What type of sign can, are you allowed out in front? Will they allow you to put pole signs 
or are only monument signs allowed? In a lot of areas, if they restrict your pole signs and you can only have a monument sign, there's often a lot of green space requirements as well, and this really hinders the visibility of the site. The next thing we want to talk about is site access. So in order to be able to process volume, you have to be able to get your customers in and off the site. So where the site is located is going to affect this. Oftentimes, if you're at a corner with a signal, this is considered the A plus site. The reason being, you have access from two streets. This can sometimes actually hinder the location if it's a high traffic volume area and traffic gets backed up at a stoplight. So there's also the mid block location. A mid block location oftentimes allows the customers who may be slowing down at the, at the signal or stopped time to see you and get over to your site. Now the issue with mid block locations is sometimes they can be divided and there's a median and there's not gonna be access from both sides of the street. So if you have a median on the road in front of your site, you can only capture one half of that traffic count. You can't capture the entire traffic count. Car wash is a luxury and it's not a need, so oftentimes if it's not convenient to the customer, they'll keep going until they find one that's more convenient to them. Now if you have a median cut or a dedicated turning lane, then you can certainly capture both sides of the road and you're capturing the entire traffic volume. We touched on speed limit earlier. This is again where speed limit is very important. There has to be room for a customer to get in and out of the site and across traffic. So the faster that traffic is moving, the more difficult this can be, and that can certainly limit your volume on site. So the fifth secret is gonna be, can you even build a car wash there? So you need to check once you've identified that it's a good car wash site, is the site zoned for a car wash? Now this is gonna be very rare that you find a site that's approved for a car wash where you wanna build a car wash. Typically where you have zoning for a car wash is usually gonna be an industrial area. Industrial areas, you're usually not gonna have high traffic volume on the weekends when most people have time to go get their cars washed. We've already identified where we want to build is gonna be in a commercial retail zone. This is where you have your highest traffic counts, your highest local traffic, and they're there every week. A lot of people think residential sites would be good. Well, typically if you're building in a residential area, you're limiting your draw to only those neighborhoods that are in that area. Since it's not typical to find a good car wash site that's zoned for a car wash, you usually have to go through a conditional use permit process or else get a variance to be able to wash cars on that site. So once we've identified a good car wash site, we found out that we can either get it zoned or permitted for a car wash then what are the other things that can keep it from being a good car wash site? One is gonna be the cost of the property. So the cost of the property and whether it's leased or owned property is gonna be a big factor in the viability of your car wash project. Oftentimes, if you have to lease a property, it can be difficult to get financing on it. Lending institutions love property ownership because there's equity involved. An adage that we hear is you pay for the right site once, you pay for the wrong site every day. So while the cost of the property can be a big factor in the viability of it, it also is gonna be a big factor in the success of the site. The right site is the right site. The other thing we need to consider is, is there sewer and water available? So having water and sewer available for a car wash site is gonna be imperative. You can wash cars if you don't have sewer availability, but it's not very cost effective to have a closed loop system. So we've now found a car wash site that is located in the right area. It's rare to find one that's not in a competitive market. So if we're in a competitive market, but we found a good car wash site, the next thing that can set us apart and determine our success or failure is gonna be what are we doing that's different from our competitors? What is our unique selling proposition that would draw people to our car, our car wash site and not the competitor's car wash site? So if you can answer these five secrets to finding a seller car wash site and check each of these boxes, find one that's priced in so the investment makes sense, find one that has the availability of sewer and water and have a good unique selling proposition, you should have a very successful car wash site. I wanna thank you for spending time with me today going over the five secrets to finding a stellar car wash site. If there's anything that I can do to help you, Again, my name is Brad Sorensen with Sunny's Consulting and Business Development. My contact information 
will be listed on the screen. Feel free to reach out with any questions you have. Thanks again. Welcome back. Sunday's the Car Wash Factory, our virtual car wash expo. You just heard from Brad Sorensen, five keys to picking stellar car wash sites. I have Brad joining us live. Morning, Bradley. Good morning. I got Miss Katie Pierce again, our vice president of sales and marketing. Morning, Katie. Morning. And a special guest, Mr. Zeev Joshman, Car Wash Services of the Southeast. Zeev, it's always good to see you, bud. My pleasure. All right. We got a short, short time period, so I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to ask each one of you. We're just going to blow through these questions, answer them as quickly as you possibly can. Let's start with you, Zeev. Zeev, is it better to build ground up or find an existing car wash today and try to refurbish it? Good question. Uh, you know, ground up always has, has produced more cars. I think, uh, you know, as far as when you build it, I mean, you get a better uh, growth growth rate. But I tell you, uh, you know, the nice thing about the remodels is to you know, to grow your market because you find some full service car washes that you can you can develop your market even better. So, but a, a ground up is, the if you're going to, your first one, I would do a ground up first. There's no doubt about it. All right, fair enough. Ms. Katie, how close can I build a competitor if they're very poor operators? You know, we get that question a lot. You have to be very careful here because um, even if they are a poor operator, they're still gonna wash some cars. You're never gonna take 100% of someone's volume from them. So you always wanna be mindful of that. Um, what we always tell our customers is, you know, they may be washing your profit. So you definitely want to find a place where you can have a market to yourself um, and, and make sure that you're not splitting that pie with someone too closely. Bradley, why do car washes fail? That's from Chris and Littleton. Location, location, location. <laughs> the number one reason that car washes fail is they build in the wrong spot. Uh, the other two is if they build in a competitive market and there's not enough room for them, and the third is they're just poor operators. Z, back to you. How do I know what size tunnel to build? Is bigger necessarily better? Well, I think the land will dictate uh, what you can build, but I would build it as, as, as long as possible. Uh, you know, uh, so if the land allows you to build it, then I'd build it uh, the longer the better. So certainly- Katie, Katie, your thoughts on the, the size of the tunnel? Is bigger always better? I don't think it's always better, but I agree with Dave. The, the size of the property is going to dictate how big of a wash you can put on it. And you should probably maximize it because your area generally will continue to grow and the population grows around you. Um, but you look at what your egress is and what your setbacks are. And then, you know, we're going to be able to tell you what size tunnel you can fit. And the same thing with the number of vacuums. People ask, how many free vacuums do I need? And I always say as many as you can get. All of them, right. <laughs> yep. That's for sure. So what What I think some people neglect to take into consideration, what are we going to be washing five years from now? Obviously, you know, when we first open, we're probably not going to be washing our, our maturity uh, score, site score uh, amount. So build it for what you're going to be washing five years from now. All right. Uh, Bradley, does it make sense to build a car wash on leased property? If it's the right site, if it's the right site, uh, lease property. The only problem with that is it's a little bit more, a little bit difficult to get financing on that. But if it's the right site and that's the only way to do it, then certainly. Mm -hmm. Zeev, do you prefer to have the free vacuum space in the street, or do you prefer having the um, pay stations closer to the road? You know, Bob, uh, uh, I, I do either way. Depending on the, on the best layout, I think the visibility. You know, vis visibility is very important. Okay, accessibility also. Uh, we're looking at a site, uh, you know, that will enhance the location. But at the end of the day, to answer the question, um, uh, it doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Um, some people like to have the, the building facing the street, you know, to show the cars washing, uh, and they do a lot of glass. Uh, some people, but I, I don't think it really matters. I think flow is more important to me and visibility of the building and the whole operation. So functionality over form. Absolutely. Got it. I like that. Brad, what type of retail makes the best neighbors for a car wash to draw from? Weekly needs retail, grocery stores, big box stores, any kind of retail where people are going to be there on a weekly basis is what you're looking to build next to. All right. So examples, Target, Safeways, those types. Exactly. ATB, any kind of grocery store, you know, people are getting a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread. They're already in that spending mind frame, so it's a good place to be be close to. 
Steve, this one's back to you because I know you're familiar with this. And it's kind of a lengthy question, so bear with me. What's the first step when you find a location that looks good? Do you find out if the city will allow a car wash first, or do you approach the owner and see if they're willing to sell the property? Um, I'd, I'd see if they're, they're willing to sell the property first. Uh, you can rezone something. It takes a while to do that. But I, I would, uh, if they're a good location, uh, definitely see if you can get it under contract and and then and then see if what, what's going to take to get it zoned properly, if that's what you need. What would be the minimum maximum tunnel size for a population of about 30,000 with a 20,000 traffic count? Zeev, I'll let you answer that one as well. You know, Bob, I'm gonna go back to the, the land again. You know, the longer the tunnel, the better quality of product you can get. And, and you know, that's just, you know, the better drying you're gonna get and, then, and the better experience I think you can do with all the applications that we have. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, you gotta put on whatever can fit on the land, but, um, you know, I wouldn't build a 180 footer in, in that kind of market, but 120, 130, absolutely. Brad, after you confirm that a site looks good, <clears throat> excuse me, and I want to move forward, what is the next step to take? So once you qualify the site, the performa is meeting an ROI that you're looking for. At that point, you want to start start getting the design of the site and talking about your equipment package with the regional sales manager and also working on the zoning with the city. Ms. Katie, is it a good strategy to build a mini tunnel with enough space to add another mini tunnel later on? It is, you can do that. Um, you know, you should really check the, the cost up front before you make those types of decisions. I think a lot of times the construction people will tell you that it, it may be just as cost effective to build the entire structure all at one time, as opposed to adding it later. Doesn't mean you have to put the equipment in um, or the pay stations, but to build the, the shell and do all your underground work up front may be more cost effective. Yeah, I'm certain it would be, good point. All right, this gentleman says, my plot is 0 0.67 acres. Does it work for a full service car wash? The location is good, fulfilling the five major points mentioned. Bradley. So it's going to depend on setbacks, green space requirements, how much usable land that actually is. It may or may not be sufficient. A full service car washing usually takes a little bit more, at least a, an acre to an acre and, and a acre. quarter. Yeah, uh, that's going to be tight. Yeah, that's, that's going to be, be tight. tight. Be tight. You could do a nice little mini tunnel on that, however. Uh, hey, I, I had is, a 120 foot uh, express on 0.7 acres, so it just depends on the shape. Yeah, right. I've That's seen a half true. an acre. I've seen a half an acre work too. All right, back to Brad. In a shopping center, our parcel situation is it okay for your accessibility to be through the shopping center? So it certainly can be. The shopping center is going to be uh, the weekly needs draw that we're looking for. The difficult thing with that is you when you're evaluating that site it's hard to evaluate the projections because you're not taking the traffic count from the main road so it's certainly where you want to be it's just hard to project volume at those sites ideally you're going to get visibility from the main traffic pattern all right let's go back to Zeev. Zeev, this is from kim there's a lot of back and forth on which way your tunnel should face should your clean car come out facing the highway or the reverse I, i'd rather i can go both ways bob again i'm gonna go back to the 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 flow of the site uh, that's going to dictate to me um i you know sometimes i'd rather have the i'd rather have the car coming out of the exit end most of the time but i got no problem with it you can see the show in the front so but i think the flow of the tr flow of the site is, is going to uh, trump anything else all right, Miss Katie, <clears throat> let me go to you on this one. Are there any other businesses that pair well with a car wash on the same property? You know, some people have looked at a bunch of different stuff. Um, anything that generates traffic that you can share is gonna be positive for you. Um, the main thing you wanna look at is you don't want to impede your, your traffic flow. You know, one of the car washes that I had recently, we shared property with a restaurant and it was a great partner but when when the developer laid it out they actually squeezed our our site so that the restaurant could have more parking spaces and it actually created um you know a reduction in our volume we felt like over time because our type our site was just a little too tight so the main thing you wanted 
to take away from that is, you know, don't try to squeeze something else on the property with you to cut down your property costs because it could hamper your volume in the long run. Very good. All right, guys, we're out of time. I appreciate y'all stopping by. Zeev Jossman, always good to see you. Miss Katie Bye. Pearson, Brad Sorensen, thank you very much. Stay tuned for more virtual car wash expo right after this. Have a good one.